extend their lead. Extra point good by Crater, and that pushes the lead up to 11. After the touchdown, out is Crater to kick. A fairly short kick from the 14. He goes 86 yards on the kick return. And the Vikings have made this now a one-score game. Crosby connects on the extra point, and the lead is down to four. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. Now, right now, they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. On play action, it's Murray. He finds his man complete. That's Bishop. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Murray now on first down. And he finds Gronk. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Murray now. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Just his second incompletion so far. He's 8 for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because he just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. Murray looks to throw again. Second and 10. He'll air this one out for Kirk. And this is caught. Touchdown. It's so easy to focus on the speed and elusiveness of Kyler Murray. But as he shows right there, don't sleep on the arm strength. Prater for the extra point. And that makes it a 21-10 game. Turn on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and take it. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Oh, 
Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. The cards go in nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Operating from the gun, Gray. And complete right side to Cook. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Cards are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. And they finally take him down, but not before he reaches the 43. A huge play there for Arizona. Ordinarily, when you're backed up this deep, most teams like to play it on the safe side, but not these guys. They took a big shot downfield and wound up hitting it for a big play. Back them into a corner, they come out swinging. Play fake, Murray. And incomplete on a deep ball. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Here's Murray. He finds his man complete. It's Bishop. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try the left side. It's Bishop. Space to run past the 20. Touchdown, Cardinals! A great effort there with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Cardinals push further out in front. Extra point good by Prater. And the lead is up to 18 now. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. Then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. A give to Cook out of the gun. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. But well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. 
And that is incomplete. job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived and I've got to tell you you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach when you're going to get him sometimes you panic as well and think I've got to be there right now instead in this case timed it perfectly and knocked it free absolutely love the flexibility of these punters their leg drive able to get it way up in the air and that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. Now they had to go the length of the field last time out to get into the end zone, and with this starting field position, they're going to have to pretty much do it again. And I think the thought process going into it is, hey, if you have to be methodical, and go ahead and do that. But what you really want are a couple of big plays, eat up chunks of yardage, and cut down the number of times you have to snap the football. That catch is number 819 of his career. It ties him with Hall of Famer Steve Largent. Who did things largely below the radar, not this guy. 819 catches, that speaks loudly and volumes. On first down, Bishop. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They'll try the left side. It's Bishop. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. at halftime I'll go from one personality that's you Charles Davis to another one in Orlando the coach he'll have stats and scores from around the NFL you and Jonathan Coachman both larger than life no doubt about it but you're stuck with me in this booth <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling and happy and he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there the Vikings gonna signal for the first of their timeouts so as they take it over we step aside on fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And he will not make it. They stop him short of the first down. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool this defense. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Vikings get a late score here, the final minute of the first half. Crosby with the extra point, and that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. 
And with a little under a minute to go, still time to try to put a drive together to add to their lead, should they so choose. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Switch, switch, switch. Throwing again on second and ten. Murray. He finds his man complete. That's Bishop. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the card's going to call another timeout. Their second as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on first down is Murray. He's going to look deep for more. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Cardinals. Rondale Moore, his second touchdown on the season. And the Cardinals now adding on to their lead. Prater for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. Touchdown out is Prater to kick. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Vikings now to start their next drive. And with a three-score deficit staring them in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. He finds his man complete. That's Harrison. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Will go down as a gain of six, and it'll make it a second down. Looking to throw, Gray. Forced out to his left. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Love the idea, love the concept, but you gotta leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's got this to Jefferson. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson in the final seconds of the first half. And the Vikings are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. Extra point up and good by Crosby. And that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Right there, 
A final shot before half for Murray. Now he lets it go deep for Kirk. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off down at the two. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you on out to our studios in Orlando. Here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? We're paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks. I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half. So make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers, a little bit more to the perimeter perhaps. But above all, Play your game. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Off play action. Gray. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release and they did force the incomplete pass. Second and 10. to throw again. Gray. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked by Jeff Gladney. And the Cardinals are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. Tough one there. First drive of the third quarter, throw an interception, and now a chance that they could be in even a bigger hole if they can convert this into points. Yeah, but how good do you feel if you're that defensive coordinator right now? Because you just know that the head coach looked at him and said, turn him loose, big man. And he'd be able to take a few extra chances playing with this type of a lead. And boy, it paid off. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. Second and nine. Now Murray off play action. This is the tight end to Joku. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down. And you will touch down, you Cardinals. DeAndre Hopkins, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Cardinals turning that interception into a touchdown. Extra point good by Prater. And the lead is up to 18 now. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Mm -hmm. 
Here's second and ten. Throwing again. Gray. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Here's Gray on third down. That ball caught by Harrison. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big connection on that one. 34 yards. Now a play fake here on first down. A rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off at the 22. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. Second down and eight. Shotgun now for Murray. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time, separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. From the gun, Murray. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 35. A big play that time on the catch and run. Just more of the same there, partner. Guys have just been running free in the secondary this entire game. No pass rush, a lot of passes completed. Been an easy day for him. Now a throw here to his running back. They'll contain him to just four, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, it's Bishop. And he gets it down to the 32. 52 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Yeah, once more, a strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. First down, Murray. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. If you're going to run against this unit, especially down here, just beware. I mean, they're the top rushing defense in the league. Yeah, and then they go ahead and they double down with the whole thing because you think, okay, let's throw the ball. Oh, yeah, that's right. They defend the pass pretty well, too. Very difficult task right now. Back to throw now on second and ten. Touchdown! That's caught. Kyler Murray from ten yards out. And the Cardinals will extend their lead. Now Prater to add the PAT. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. 
And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together Charles a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. You know, a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. There's a nice pickup right there. And after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. Gray now throwing on first down. On the move to his left. He finds his man complete. That's Harrison. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this one complete to Smith. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll look to throw again. He's got Harrison left side complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 20-yard line. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. J.J. Watt, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. So after a rare misstep on this drive, they'll try to make amends on second and 15. Looking for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off with great anticipation. And the Cards are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at the 20. Hands it off out of the gun. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the work. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Now they get a fourth-quarter pick. A little something to hang their hat on, I guess. Okay, so let's face it, though. Who's happy about this play? Fantasy guys, right? Yeah. The analytics will tell you one thing or another. It has a bad play on one hand, a good play on the other. But it's all about the fantasy points here. Yeah, because this ball game is over. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, I kind of got to give him credit. Another incompletion there, yes, but he's still trying to make plays outside the pocket. Yeah, he's been hemmed in for much of the game. How about him getting outside there? And that's what you want to see from your quarterback. He's not giving up on this game, so every other player on the field has to say to himself, I can't give up either. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Vikings capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. Crosby connects on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down to 18. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. 
certainly no reason to panic. They've got the three-score lead, but the turnover last time, the interception that led to a touchdown, you'd have to think they might not be dialing that up again. Yeah, probably not. They're still in fantastic shape, though, so I would imagine before he trotted out here for this series, head coach probably just leaned over to him and was like, listen, we're wearing these color shirts. <laughs> Throw it to those guys, not the others. Try to make a joke out of it and just let them go out there with a little bit more confidence. Out of the gun, here's Murray. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. He's got a man complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A big play that time through the air. 36 yards. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now this time, Murray to throw it. And a quick throw here, that's complete. A good rally to the football, keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. Murray now to throw. He'll let this go for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. David Njoku, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cardinals are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. Prater for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25. After the touchdown, is Prater to kick. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Remember, they have won three straight, but getting to four straight does not appear to be in the cards as they are in a big fourth quarter hole. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Marcus Golden, too much to handle that time, gets the sack. Now Gray to throw on second down. He's going to let it fly. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Gray. He finds his man complete. It's Harrison. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. He finds his man complete. It's Harrison. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll make this a second down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And that one going to come up short, low throw. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Now Crosby for the point after. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. The 
kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. They're looking at a third straight win here if they can hold on. Back to throw it, Murray. He's going to look deep for more. And got his man complete. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. A huge play there for Arizona. To throw is Murray. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Rondell Moore there to make the grab. And the Cardinals are closing in on a 4 and one start as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Extra point good by Prater. And they open the lead up now to 25. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Vikings now to start their next drive. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for Arizona, they boost their record up to a strong 4-1. And, and they will hit the road next week to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, the loss will move them back to 3-2 and two on the year. And they'll have a tough one at home next week against the Green Bay Packers.